Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please ensure to like, share, and subscribe. And also click the bell notification in the top right hand corner to be made aware anytime I upload tutorials or videos to YouTube. All right, let's craft together. All right guys, so today we are going to be designing our um, car tray where if you are someone that um, normally has um, times when you're eating in your car and you don't have anywhere to sit your food so it's probably sitting in the passenger seat um, or in between you and the passenger seat um, now you have these car trays that you can actually attach to your steering wheel and use that to put your food on while you're eating okay of course I have to say we want to make sure we're only doing this when we're parked somewhere safely and you're not trying to you know maneuver around driving okay so you know some things are not as common as we think they are common sense is not always common okay so we want to make sure that we do put that disclaimer out there all right so this car tray guys I'm going to make this car tray um 15.1 by 16.1 and we'll change the settings here to 15.1 to 6.1 and then i'm going to lock that back and basically once i brought this image into cricut design space there's nothing for me to do but to just change the sizing and go ahead and send it to the printer and then have cricut to cut it so i'm really done i did this design in microsoft powerpoint and i also got the shape that i need um, by using edit points in microsoft powerpoint so if you want to check that video tutorial out it is on my youtube channel and it'll have this same image um, right here I believe on editing points let me just double check and I can show you guys so on my YouTube channel I posted this video tutorial yesterday and It's this one. Okay, unbelievable tricks to get, get creative with PowerPoint shapes. So this will show you how to get the image that I'm using for the car tray. Okay. All right, now that we got that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on make it. And Cricut will now allow us to print up to a 11 by 17 if your printer will allow a large print um, as large as 11 by 17. I mean, you don't need to, um, I've set up my settings so it will automatically default to 11 by 17 when I'm using a larger print and you don't need to mirror or anything. I'm going to be using sublimation ink for this project because I'm going to use my sub printer. And so um, I'm using the sub printer because that ink does not um, smear or run when it gets wet, like your inkjet ink will smear or run, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. And we're going to send it to the printer. And we're going to leave it on 11 by 17. I'm going to change the printer to my um, Epson. workforce 7720 we're going to take off the bleed and we're going to use the system dialog print and i'm going to reselect my epson Click on preferences 
and I'm going to change this to paper cassette one tabloid which is the 11 by 17 and I'm going to make sure that the let me go back here my quality is all the way over to the far right and that my more options I deselect high speed and then we're going to have the output the same as the document size and at this point I'm ready to click on okie dokie and I already have my Epson loaded I'm going to click on print and I haven't printed in a while so hopefully I have enough ink because I hate to waste a piece of my inkjet vinyl because I don't have enough ink in this printer but we'll we'll soon find out <laughs> Hoping for the best. All right, I'm going to pause here for a minute while this is printing out. All right, guys, so our image has finished printing out. So now I'm going to click on medium card stock, which is the setting I'm going to be using. And just like you see the image with the short side um, at the top, that's the same way we're going to load load it in onto our Mac for Cricut. All right, so you want to make sure it's going in the same direction. Otherwise, your image is not going to cut out right. So you always want to line it up the way Cricut has it on the mat that is displayed. So I'm going to load mine up here and get it to where Cricut can cut it for us. I'm going to put some tape down to hold it in place. Now keep in mind, my colors are going to stay kind of matte looking, and that's because I'm not applying any heat and I'm using sublimation ink. But I'm using sublimation ink because that ink doesn't smear when it gets wet like your inkjet ink would. All right. All right, guys, I'm just cutting some tape to put on my image to hold it in place because my 11 by 17 mat is not the stickiest. So I'm just going to add some tape. To hold, hold this baby down. I think I got my mat upside down too. <laughs> and I do. That's all good. It's all good. So here's my image. And so short side at the top. Got my mat upside down, but I'm just going to put it in the cricket this way. The long way. So I'm going to have, I'm going to get my camera and have it to record um, this part and then we will get set up to um, put some Mod Podge on the back because remember this is vinyl so it's not going to stick because we're not going to be applying any heat. So we're going to put some Mod Podge on the back to get this um, bottom to stick to our um, car tray and then we're going to add epoxy all right so i'll be back all right guys so i'm going to go ahead and load my mat into the cutting machine and i've already selected my settings i always choose cardstock when i'm working with the inkjet and sublimation vinyl So Cricut is looking for the registration marks.
here. It looked like my Cricut kind of jumped the gun a little bit because my mat is not super sticky. So we're going to see where it cut. Might be a little bit off-putting, but we'll be fine. So you can see where it kind of jumped right here, but it's totally fine. We're going to go with it. And I want you to see how it's going to fit inside of our tray. <coughs> so I'm just going to cut this little part right here. And I think I'm going to cut that little part right there because I don't want all that white showing. So I'm just going to use my scissors to tidy it up. So that's why we're always saying, guys, make sure your mat is sticky. Because this could have been totally worse than what you just saw. But it's good that you saw it. I like to keep it completely 100 with you guys and just because I'm a content crafting creator that's what I like to call myself um, we make mistakes too some people hide theirs but I'm not gonna do that <coughs> excuse me all right, so now <clears throat> I might cut that little top part out, but you can see how that lays in there a lot nicer without you having to go in and tidy up. Let's see if I can get you a better look here. Without you having to go in and tidy it up <clears throat> by using the editing points, it allows you to get that sizing better. So let me fix this little part where Cricut jumped off and then we'll start with our epoxy portion all right guys so here we are we are now going to do the uh, epoxy resin portion of the um, tray so this is where I initially put a piece of cardstock and you can see how it had watermarks on it and so that's why I decided to go with my inkjet sublimation vinyl instead and so we're going to get this all laid out and then we're going to um we're going to get this glued down because remember it's just plastic on the back and it doesn't have any adhesive because we're not applying any heat okay so this is htv vinyl basically that we're using anytime you're using epoxy resin you still want to use your mask you might have saw me talk about this earlier today when i was doing dtf um <clears throat> Uh, the DTF hack you always want to use a mask we're not talking about the COVID mask that you will wear on your face and I'm using the amazing clear cast I got this at Walmart it was like 19 bucks um, and this is the 16 ounce so anytime you use epoxy resin it's gonna come with a part A and a part B and you're gonna use equal parts okay so I'm going to get my little measuring cups to help me measure that. But I went ahead and let this stay. 
and uh, I'm going to um, just worry about this. I'm not going to focus on that. So this is what happens, guys, when you're using paper or cardstock. You can get watermarks, and when you get those water blemishes on top uh, or underneath that resin, it's not going, you can't fix it, okay? It's there. So this is why we always say you want to use um, something that is um, water resistant or vinyl, uh, sublimation inks, those things that don't smear and run um, when you're putting epoxy on a resin on top of it, okay? Got my gloves. You should always use gloves. You should be in a well-ventilated area when you're doing epoxy as well. So I'm going to start out by getting some Mod Podge on here. All right, guys, we're going to get our glue on the bottom here <clears throat> to get uh, our image glued down. And you can be generous with this because we're working with vinyl and not paper. So you don't have to worry about it seeping through and uh, creating issues. And y'all, I haven't worked with my epoxies and my Mod Podge and you know, we go out and we buy this stuff because we think we're going to be using it so frequently and then we don't because this Mod Podge got all kinds of clunks in it. <laughs> Big old clunks in it. So I'm going to have to make sure that I don't end up with any clunks in it when I get ready to put this vinyl down on it because I don't want it looking weird to me. And the Mod Podge is going to um, dry clear. But I'm going to try to clean it up as much as I can. Alright, so that's a nice coating of Mod Podge. And I don't see many clumps so we're gonna go ahead and put this down sure it's laying nice and flat nice and flat fingers if you have to to kind of make sure there's no pockets underneath there you want it to look really nice and smooth you know I printed this image out when I printed it out on the cardstock my inkjet printed her hair pink I didn't even notice it until I was just looking at the sublimation one and I'm like why is her hair blue and I went back and looked at the original image and I'm like because it is blue <laughs> it was supposed to be blue all right so that looks good I'm gonna get a paper towel here give me one moment I'm just going to kind of 
go around these edges just a little bit. Just kind of clean it up. Clean up behind yourself. And it was kind of good that I did do the little circle part first because I want to be able to pick this up and kind of shift the uh, resin around. And it would have been hard to do that with two areas with, uh, you know, epoxy in there at the same time moving all around. So this part right here is already cured. And for those of you that have never worked with epoxy resin before, it takes about 20, 12 to 24 hours to cure. And then you demold it. But we're not going to be doing any demolding. We're going to... Um, we're not going to demold. We're going to leave our resin on top like we did with the part where our little cup or glass would go. Um, so we're going to leave that part. But we want to make sure that we got... I can still feel it kind of like I want to give it a little bit of time to kind of dry a little bit because I can still move it around and all that good stuff. I don't want to get no epoxy underneath here. So, like I said, just use your finger. Use your finger. Like your mama told you, don't be giving nobody the finger. And now I'm telling you to use your finger. All right. So I'm going to let that dry for a minute. I feel like I need to put a, a coat of epoxy on the top. But then again, I don't. Um, I'm going to see how it goes without epoxy. I said epoxy on the top. I mean Mod Podge. So I'm using the matte Mod Podge. Um, I don't think I need to put any on top because I'm, you know, like I said, this is vinyl. It's going to become shiny when I put the epoxy resin on there anyway. So it's not like I'm doing it so that it can, you know, normally if you're not using vinyl, then you would put that on the top to protect it, to keep it from getting watermarks. But that's not the case with this um so i think we're gonna be good i'm gonna go ahead and like i said when you're using the epoxy resin you want to make sure you put your mask on so i'm gonna go ahead and mask up and hopefully you guys can still hear me fairly well with the mask on but i'm going to measure equal parts of epoxy resin into these cups the A and B parts, I'm going to measure equal parts, and then I'm going to take and pour them into the big cup and stir it all up, okay? So that's what you're going to see me do here, even though I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be talking too much anyway. All right, so here goes nothing.
side be? We're going to stir this up really good. I got some epoxy on my glove. So my glove was sticking to the cup. That would be your hand if you didn't have any epoxy or any glo uh, gloves on your hand. That would be epoxy getting on your hands and that is not good for you guys. All right, guys, I'm going to get my heat gun and I'm going to zap this just a little bit.
and that's just to get some of these ear pockets out. So that's what we have guys i noticed that i'm in my kitchen all right so i can see that my camera keeps cutting off I, maybe out of space guys but i wanted to show you what it looked like right now after i zapped it with my heat gun to knock out some of those bubbles but i think it's going to be gorgeous and uh we're gonna let this sit and cure for about 12 to 24 hours we will not demold this this is going to um, cure just like this and we're going to leave it as, as is but what I want you to be able to notice is the difference in how this looks so clear and gorgeous so clear and gorgeous compared to when I used the cardstock okay so this is ink jet sublimation vinyl that I'm using, okay? And I did not put any Mod Podge on top of it. So I can feel underneath here, it's getting warm. That's a sign to let you know that the epoxy is starting to cure because you have a window of about 30 minutes to work with the epoxy um, before it starts to cure that's from the time you start mixing until the time you get everything set so you have about a 30 i think it's like a 30 i had the uh let's see you have about 30 to 40 minutes work time so you can see here 30 to 40 minutes work time that's from the time you start pouring into a and b and mixing and all that together 40 minutes okay so you guys can see that it's turning out really pretty um, I apologize for my video cutting in and out. Uh, when I look back at this, I'll try to put any text in here um, to let you know what I was doing if the camera wasn't recording anything. But I think that I'm out of space. Um, and so I was busy working and I had that big mask on my face. So we're going to let this cure and then I will come back. I just cut off again <laughs> and show you guys in another video clip just the finished product i'm not going to do anything with this part here guys that's like where you would put like some condiments or whatever i'm not going to put anything here um but i just wanted you guys to be able to see the difference and you saw i hope you saw where i was like moving the tray back and forth and around and around that's because uh epoxy resin is self-leveling and so i was trying to get it to move around to cover up the entire um image and without it smearing all over on the top so i got a little bit over here and then i kind of wiped it up if you guys were able to see that um in the video clip but i'm not sure because like i said it kept cutting out and of course i didn't know it was cutting out because i was working and so i'm in my kitchen i'm not in my normal little work area in my craft room so that's it guys i'm gonna let this cure and then like i said i'll do a quick video just to show you guys the finished product, okay? Um, but I will go ahead and say my goodbyes. Uh, if you're currently in my Facebook group, guys, thank you so much for following me via Facebook. If you would like to join my Facebook group, it is Ken Doris's Cricut and Creative Crafters. It will be linked in the description of this tutorial. Just click on the link and agree to the Facebook group rules and we'll get you in. And if you 
are seeing me for the first time you like my method of teaching you want to learn how to do all these awesome crafts guys um, then please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel and for those of you that are already subscribed thank you again for the love and support and all the comments that you guys leave on my channel because i love talking to you guys all right sublimation ink inkjet vinyl sublimation inkjet sublimation vinyl is what i'm using and i only used one coat of um mod podge to seal this down okay to seal the image down to the tray and i did not put any mod podge on top of the image and what you see is and you guys know my motto each one reach one so that each one can teach one and you guys have an amazing day bye